All right, so on this episode of Drinks with John, we usually start off with a, with a recipe for a drink, but you know what, we're gonna get right over that because I got a lot to get into with my very special guest, Jake Snake Roberts. Yeah, I bought Johnny a special drink for the show. It's a vinegar and water. <laughs> He's a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking already, already golden. Thank you for doing the show. How you yeah, doing, man? I appreciate man? it, man. Like a sword, you can't beat it, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it's a great day, man. Any day's a great day these days, you know. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna bullshit everybody, man. I mean, 20 years ago, man, I was flying so hard and fast I couldn't even see the ground, you know, and uh, I was wrong. You know, I didn't know what to look for. You know, travel the world, I don't know how many times you've been on the road, you know what it's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you beat yourself down thinking you're gonna find it the next day, you're gonna find it the next day, and you never found it. Sobriety helped me find it. And, That's uh, great, man. What I had to find was that inner peace, you know, and uh, enjoy what I have. You get and a lot, man. You yeah, have a fucking man, lot. You know, but you run the world hard, man, and you keep grabbing gold rings and gold rings and gold rings, man, and, you, and you're thinking, there's got to be something that makes me feel just right. No, man. No, Didn't man. find it until you got sobriety. Until I got right, man. That's really cool, you man. Know? So let's just get right into it. Yeah, um, you're out on uh, on uh, uh, the Dirty Details tour. Yeah, and it's yeah. fucking DDT, awesome. DDT kind of cool, huh? Yeah, it's really cool, man. Yeah, right. We're gonna get into some DDT shit here in a little bit. Cool. Um, and you're out here. I've looked at your schedule. You're fucking all over the place. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gonna be. I mean, if you got, I I had the pleasure of checking out your uh, your show last night right here in Huntington Beach, and uh, I gotta say. I was fucking enthralled. It was awesome. Oh yeah, just having fun. Man. Yeah, and you could tell you're just up there having a good yeah. time. It's you fucking know, great. I used a lot of people. They go out there with a set. I go out there with an empty mind, man. And whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth, and yeah. it just seems to work, you know. And I just want to have fun, man. I want to engage with the people. I want to pull them in so I can talk to them and visit with them and. Uh, that was very evident. You got a couple people who throw out some uh, some ideas oh, yeah, out there, right. and you're yeah. just like, Pick up right there, you're like, yeah, yeah, I, I it, got man. a story for that guy right here. Yeah, I had a couple of stories for those two girls, but I couldn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago, I'd been tearing that shit up. 20 years ago, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there was a couple I'd been spanking them all there. night long, man. <laughs> Woo! That's Damn, fucking great. I had a vision. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was fucking insane. So, yeah. <laughs> So there was like some great stories last night. I want to see if we could talk a little bit about those and maybe even get into some further shit. I, I got some questions because I'm a huge fucking fan. I grew cool. up watching you, cool. did the whole thing. And, uh, you know, I want to ask you about, first off, just let's go for the big kahuna. What was Andre the Giant like? I oh watched the HBO special. Yeah. I know a little bit, obviously, never had the chance to meet him, do any of that kind of stuff, but you had some fucking epic matches with this guy. Yeah. So can you give me any uh, Andre yeah. stories? I, I was real disappointed because uh, they invited me to do part of that special on Andre, and uh, you know, I, I was on the road and I couldn't get to where they were at, and they couldn't get to where I was at, so I didn't get to partake in that, and I wanted to because I just had nothing but love for the man. You know, for me, when they told me that I was going to be going into the ring with Andre, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> you know? And uh, how dare you fans cheer me on? Are you trying to get me murdered? <laughs> oh, that was great because he was the heel at that time, I know, right? I know, man. But God, God, you know, you got to remember, when I met him first, it was like 1970, you know, yeah. <laughs> in the 70s. We're not going to get into yeah, that. Yeah, 76. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I was three years old. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, they asked me to drive the van because he traveled in a van. You know, he didn't travel in a car, so they rented a van. And they had me put a beanbag chair in the back. And so, you know, you drive Andre to the town. So I'm like, are you fine? I got to, you know, and I'm scared to death, this motherfucker. You know, I mean, I, scared and respecting. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I didn't want to be some dumb fucking kid that's, you know, blah, 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 because I just didn't think he'd go for that, and he wouldn't have. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, I picked him up after the show, and he gets in the, crawls in the back and gets comfortable in the chair. And I'm like, you ready? He's like, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I started driving, and he goes, beer. And I'm like, you want me to stop? <laughs> yes. Okay. Get down, you know. And, a, man, a man of many words. Yeah, he said beer. I should have figured, yeah, unless you can pull one out of your ass, Jake. Duh. So I, 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 I pulled over and stopped and I said, what do you want? He goes, mm, two cases. Two cases. Two cases, two cases, man. I said, we're only doing 90 miles, bro. <laughs> he goes, 
oh, okay, uh, two cases. I'm like, all right, fine. So I went and got the two cases for him. Then I went back in and got a six pack for me. And uh, we started driving. We're going from Alexandria, Louisiana to Baton Rouge, 90 miles. Okay, I don't know about you, but whenever I drink beer, I got to piss. Oh, absolutely. So, once you break the seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Once, you, once you pop, you're going to pop to your drop. Yeah. So I had like two, and I pulled over and pissed. Andre went, no. Okay, <laughs> well, I drive some more. I've got to piss again. He's just filling up yeah. that, that third leg. Yeah, right. <laughs> I piss again. Get there, he's never gotten out. I pissed three times. That's what pissed me off. It wasn't the fact that he was able to drink all 48 beers. That, that's fine. Okay, yeah. so you're fucking drunk. I don't care. You know? Yeah. I can blow that off. But what pissed me off is he never got out to piss. So the first thing I fucking did was I dove in that fucking van, man, and I'm checking the fucking carpet. He you know, was pissing back there the whole time. Pissing the floor, you know? <laughs> well, a fucking wrestler would have pissed anywhere, you know? You got to go, you got to go. But it wasn't there. Dry. Dry. And he didn't jump out of the van and go running over to the side of the building and piss. He walked in, checked into the fucking hotel, talked to somebody for dinner. I'm like, so he I wasn't was, even racing. I was following him around to see him piss. <laughs> You're you know? timing it. You're I'm timing like, this it. This is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> and and that really hurt me, man, because I just felt, man, I'm such a fucking douchebag, you know. <laughs> I mean, I can't even hold my piss, much less my alcohol. But then, of course, now. I'm, Time moves forward, and um, you know I'd seen him during my career, different places, man. And you know, he was, I was just in awe. You know, my father was big. My father was seven foot and weighed four twenty-five. But Andre is bigger than big, man. He's bigger than a giant. He is the fucking man, brother. And uh, anybody that says he's not, have never been around him. Um, I've seen him in action. I, I've seen, I, I've seen him. In, in I've seen him when he's in the ring with people he don't like. Uh, it's not pretty to watch. That was an interesting part of the segment, actually. I, I heard about him and uh, John, John Studd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John, John called him a freak. And he was not into that. He let, he let him have it he, in front of everybody. Talk. Yeah, I was in the match, man. Yeah. I was in the match because I watched me that and match Andre wrestling, yeah. and John's over here, but every time I turn around, fucking Andre's whacking him. I'm like, God damn, I'm gonna get killed by one of John Studd's body parts flying off of him. <laughs> Was that, that Jake was the, Roberts that was the killed when, by uh, a liver, you know? <laughs> that was the time when uh, when John was uh, referee, referee, right? Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah. was that was, a so that was my that was my you know initiation. And then when they told me that they were going to do an angle with him and he was going to pass out from the snake, I'm like, really? <laughs> Who's going to buy that shit? Yeah, they bought it. They bought because it because he did such a great job. You could sell it. He fucking sold it perfectly, man. Are you That's kidding incredible. me, man? That just goes to show you how the guy was schooled on what he was doing. He was a great performer, a great man, and a monster besides. But I've seen him toss people around the ring like rag dolls. I mean, the yeah. Iron Sheik, for instance. It was not, that's he not, got that's a hold of the Iron Sheik down no in Miami, man, and uh, he invented new maneuvers. Yeah. You know, Shit. because he'd toss the Iron Sheik in the air, and on the way down, he'd just fucking club him. You know? Ah. And poor Sheik, he just fucking lived right through it. You know, that's one good thing about dope, man. It, it does, you know, it, it <laughs> does the pain a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't remember him as far, you know. <laughs> the, then the next time is, is when they tell me that we're going to do the thing. I'm like, and then reality hit. Um, our first match together was in L.A. sports sports uh, arena, and we went to the ring, brother, and he guzzled. I mean, didn't give me a fucking thing, man, and just really mistreated. Yeah, and you're, you're trying your best. I'm trying to make a match out of it. Yeah, totally. You know, and he's just fucking, I try something, he'd block him, take me fucking down and just fucking punish me, he was, he grind was, me in the mat. He was, giving, he was giving it to you. Yeah, he wanted to see what I'd do. Yeah. So I didn't do a fucking thing in the ring. Man, we got in the back. Talked to him after about it? Talked to him. I fucking screamed at that big son of a bitch. <laughs> I fucking knocked the door open. This is why Jake the Snake's the man. I, I he knocked the door open. Said, hey, God damn it, the man. Giant. You're fucking with this bullshit. You're fucking doing it. This is wrong, and you fucking know it, big man. I said, boss, you're the greatest there fucking is. Why are you fucking with me? I'm trying to do you what, what, what needs to be done. Yeah. He said, you're sure? I'm like, hey, I just want the fucking match to be good, man. If you don't want that, then fuck this. 
Okay. And now that's how you got your okay. fucking respect right yep. there. Yep. That, that's, yep. I, I can, he I wants can see to see if you're right a fucking there. man. Yeah, he want, he's going to test you. And that's, that's what happened to Randy Savage. Randy Savage wouldn't fight back. Andre yeah. wants you to come into the ring like it's a shoot. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And act like it's a shoot. Not only in what you say and the maneuvers you do, but when you're hitting him, he wants you to lay him in. Yeah, okay. And... And you I mean, can take it, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. He's like, he's like, I'd come out of the ring. I'd come out of the ring, and my my joints would be sore, man, just from the impacts, you know. Yeah. But that's what he wanted. And after that first night, man, we went out there and we had so much fun. That's great. So much fun. Let me tell you how, how smart that guy was, man. We were in uh, Lansing, Michigan, or some fucking place, man. And pound me down, and then go over and start to fuck with a snake bag. Then he come back and pound me down again as I start to come up. And Bobby Heenan would be right there telling him, okay, go get him, Andre. And now he'd turn and come after me. Well, we're in Lansing. He gets me coming into the ring. Boom, 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 down I go. Goes towards the snake bag. But all of a sudden, I hear the people cheering. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's gonna be a tough crowd if they're cheering. They're just beating the fucking dog shit out of me. <laughs> And so I roll over and look, holy shit, there's like this 11-year-old girl in the ring. She has dumped the snake out, and she's holding it, going after Andre. And this wasn't part of the fucking no, show. No, Andre sees her. He takes a flop out of the ring to the floor. He goes in character, you know, and, oh, you know, and screaming and yelling. Fucking cops hit the ring. I grab the snake, the girl's crying. Jeez. Here come her parents. Next thing I know, Andre's on the microphone. Throw her out. <laughs> Throw her out. So he didn't skip a beat on character no, either. He no, just fucking went he with went it. With it man. Do you know how much those people hated him for having her thrown out of that building? Oh, this little was, girl. Was so hated, this little man. girl was afraid of snakes, but she loved me. So that's incredible. That, yeah. that, that actually brings me to a perfect segue I want to ask you about. I heard a story. Um, I want to hear you recant it and tell me a little bit more yeah. about it. How, just how uh, fanatic some of these fans can be. Oh, man, man, and man. when you were a heel, this, this goes back yeah. to a time when you were a yeah. heel. And uh, apparently there was someone who hated you so much at this point that it was a grandmother that I believe yeah. grabbed you cut with me. a cut you with a box cutter. With a yeah. box cutter. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty stitches, I, I, I yeah, believe, was it. Yeah, back of the arm, man. Oh fuck, man! Yeah, and then just, at the end of it, you, you recount okay. the story for me, man. I'm, I'm just going to fucking work, man, and uh, walking down the aisle, and all of a sudden my security's gone. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Because you know, usually got one guy on each side of me. So I turn and look, and they've got this old woman down, and I think she's had a heart attack. I'm like, oh, fuck, man, she got an hour. I walk by, hey, man, she, she, she dying or what? She got an hour attack? I'm like, no, man, she fucking cut you. I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Look at your arm. Fucking bitch. <laughs> I kicked her twice. Yeah, one given, the second one was like, glanced, glanced. Glanced. Oh, okay, okay. And covered her makeup or whatever. That shit you can't get away with these days, by the way. No. Yeah. <laughs> and so after the show was over, I went to the back. And the police have got her. And I'm like, what the fuck? You don't understand. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't. You know? yeah. <laughs> the fuck? She goes, I'm sorry I did that to you. I'm like, then why did you do it? Yeah. She goes, my grandchildren laughed at me. What? What the fuck is that? And come to find out, she had went over to the house, and the kids were watching wrestling, you know, 8, 10, 12-year-old. And I came on with the snake, and they were like, go, Jake, yeah. And she's like, that's a no good son of a gun. Somebody needs to cut his damn neck. You know, and she said, oh, Granny, shut up. He knocked the shit out of you. She said, I'm not afraid of him or that damn snake. Oh, Granny, shut up and go Sounds away. Sounds like my grandma, honestly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they threw it out there, man. They disrespected her. And she wanted their love and respect. Yeah. And she thought, well, my God, I'm going to get it. She got my respect. <laughs> you know? So I heard at the end of it, you took a picture with her. Yeah, and man. Give her hugs like, and shit, yeah. man. If she was taking her teeth out, I went for something else, but she wouldn't take them out. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to gum her, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, lips are lips once the lights are off. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, not the worst thing I've had happen, though. I mean, I had a guy in Dallas. Uh, I was wrestling Steam, and he stood up nine rows back, pulled out a pistol, and started shooting at me. Man. Jesus. He got two shots off. 
That's yeah, scary that as fuck, fucked man. Up, man. That's fucked up. Yeah. Especially like, well, it was really fucked up. The Sting's still in the ring going, woo, woo. You know? He was he was cutting promo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The fucking guy's already had two shots, but he didn't understand that's a gunshot. Yeah, Duh. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's pretty crazy, man. You know, it's I've crazy. Been, I've been the involved in riots and shit, and you know when the fans just go absolutely ape shit. Mexico City. Uh, that's a crazy place, man. Yeah, that's a dangerous fucking place, man, and. Uh, they invited me down there with Sherry Martell. Uh, and, uh, sensational Sherry. Sensational Sherry, man. Toughest fucking woman I've ever fought or fucked. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to have sex with Sherry, you had to move all the furniture out of the room, <laughs> tape up, uh, you know, put some grease on your fucking cheeks so the punches will slide, you know. <laughs> gear up, man. That is, that is. I'm serious, man, but it was good sex. Oh, oh goddamn. It's got to be. That's fiery oh, okay. as fuck. Yeah, That's yeah. Fiery as Head fun. butts are okay. Everything's good. And then, um, yeah, we did a thing where uh, the favorite, they were having a loser leave match. Mm -hmm. And uh, the favorite got knocked out of the ring. And when he did, I, I snatched him and blasted him and caused him to lose. Well, there was a small riot that ensued. <laughs> they weren't too happy <laughs> about it. 50,000 Mexicans wanted yeah. to cut my fucking throat right then. And we had to fight our way all the way back to the locker room. I'm talking about fist fight our way fist all fight, the way like, back. Like legit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was really serious. And about halfway back, I finally got pissed off at Sherry and grabbed her by the hair and jerked her back because she wouldn't let me hit anybody. She was getting them all. She, uh, yeah, she'd she's already plowed like nine you. motherfuckers, you know. She's done played them all out. Man. Come on, Jake, come on. I got it. <laughs> Motherfucker. Well, you, you see, you, I look back and I see her, like, I mean, she's oh, wearing she's heels and everything, man. but she was, she, she, was, she was a tall, girl. taller, yeah. bigger tough, girl, tough fucking girl, tough girl, girl, right? She had to be. Traveling yeah. with all you yeah. crazy fucks back in the day, I could imagine. Yeah, she man. Kinda you know, I, I met her, man. This is no disrespect for Sherry, man. I, I was 19 years old. I was still refereeing and um, went to Lafayette, Louisiana. And it was the first time somebody in the crowd ever actually paid attention to me. And she was a very young girl at the time. I did not know how young. <laughs> mm. Sub 18. <laughs> You know, she let it know, be known that she liked me, you know, about her looks and things she came over and said to me. And then after the show, she's still there. I'm like, what are you doing here? You know, who are you waiting on? She's like, I'm waiting on you. I'm like, no way. Yeah. I, I'm just you know, no way. I'm just a referee, you know. And, I'm, yeah. and not only the referee, I had to tear down the ring. I'm waiting on you. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. She's like, no, seriously. I want, I want to spend some time with you. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So was that was that like kind of your first like experience yeah, like that on the road? Yeah, with an arena fan, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that whole experience. So she wound up taking me. I said, "Well, I, you know, I got a hotel. You want to go?" She said, no, no, let's just go to my house. Said, Hell yeah, you know. So yeah. we go over her place. We go straight to the bedroom, and I'm on it, man. Yeah. And then I hear a noise, and I'm like, "What the hell's that?" She goes, well, "It's probably my husband." <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Turtle gone. Yeah, Penis yeah, yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. I jump up. Pulled what? Back, pulled back. Pretty she, quick. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay. <laughs> I'm fucking his wife. Yeah. This is not cool, man. You're 19 I'm, years I'm, old at the I'm time. I'm putting my like, fucking what? pants on. Yeah. She's like, it's okay. She's trying to pull me back in bed. Come on, finish me. I'm like, oh, hell no. You know, I can't believe you've done this to me. I'm looking around. There's no windows. Oh, fuck. I've got to go out this fucking door. Oh, motherfucker. Does he have a gun? No, he didn't have a gun. Thank God. Yeah. Right, I'm gotta, gotta, gotta Jake, I'm steps. telling you, it's all right. I'm like, no, it's not. She goes, you're gonna find out it's all right. How am I gonna find out? She goes, open the door. It's like, what? What the fuck? What did you see on There's two side? guys in wedding dresses kissing each other. <laughs> that was her husband. Husbands? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is yeah. that? He was that way, and they got married to give him a front. He was very wealthy. Ah, gotcha. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and this was this was at a time when it wasn't it wasn't yeah, acceptable. Yeah, this was the seventies, man. Yeah, was this not was the freakiest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. And I, I didn't matter. I couldn't get this back going. Are you kidding me, man? Because all I could think of is him coming in and ramming it up my rear while I'm ramming it up hers. And... <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't down for that. <laughs> no, 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 not back then anyway. Or now, or now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to. <laughs> I say it out loud. No, I'm sorry. You, you got to find new things every once in a while. Yeah, but that was my first experience with Sherry, man. And of course, it progressed. You know. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. 
I Speaking of it. like managers though, of, of like different people, I want to ask you like, what was your experience with Bobby the Brain Heenan? Like there was like, was there a lot of yeah, nah, talking really, in the time? Not really, Bobby. Yeah, he was very good at what he did, man. But uh, unfortunately, Bobby uh, had come up at a time when managers were a dime a dozen. And um, mm -hmm. lots of times they did things just to keep their job. And um, one of the things was reporting to the main office, you know, and being a stooge. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. So Bobby was a bit of a stooge, and uh, I can't appreciate that. I gotcha. You know. See, as a yeah. fan, I saw him mostly as a, you know, as a manager, a commentator, some, yeah, when he yeah. was commentating. He was brilliant so, at what he did. He, yeah, did, he, did, yeah. he, he was hilarious. It's funny how me. God works, man. I mean, here's a guy that all his life made his money with his voice. And he gets throat cancer. Man. How strange is that? Yeah. You tell me that shit don't happen for a reason. No, obvious. I mean, yeah, I'm just I'm saying. saying. Sometimes, yeah. I'm saying, man, it makes you wonder, man, is this karma or what? It's, it, it's something. I don't know yeah, what it is. Yeah, but it's, it's too weird man. for it not yeah. to be, man. Too weird for it. Again, talking about managers, they always used to refer to Damien as your manager. Yeah. Fuck that him. was your fucking manager. Damien, your manager make me miserable. <laughs> I heard a story last night that I couldn't fucking believe and I, we don't need to go into all that but I want to ask how many fucking snakes did you go through? Probably about 40. 40 snakes? Yeah. 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 Probably lost about death about five and then I lost one two completely and never found them. Just completely um, lost? Yeah them. yeah they took off down the toilet um, I had one go down Holy the toilet shit. and um um, Australia. Did it and, go the opposite direction? Well, it went down the toilet <laughs> and came up on the other side of the arena out of another toilet. Holy shit. And it was really, what was really weird about this man is uh, Thunder Juice and Liger wouldn't dress in my dressing room because of the snake. He didn't want to be around it. Yeah, so no way. So they got him in the locker room on the other side of the building. When he come out of the shower, he walked by the toilet, that snake came up, and he seen it. He ran across the building, the show was still going on, yeah. naked. <laughs> just like screaming. Dude. <laughs> and he went out the door, into a car, to the airport, flew back to Japan. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. Fuck I'm the out. tour. Fuck, Fuck the tour. It. And uh, I caught a lot of shit over that, but I, I thought, like I told, yeah, I told the snake to do that. What the yeah, fuck are you yeah, talking totally. about? Yeah, totally. Oh, dude, there's, there's some I never found things. that one. There's the other, the other famous one when uh, you bust out the cobra and everyone yeah. knows about the cobra and, and yeah. Macho Man. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when how, I, I just want to ask, how did you get the motherfucker to bite him? Oh, that was easy. How'd you do that? Slapped the piss out of him. <laughs> yeah, I turned my back to Macho and popped him. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah see, because we didn't yeah. see that. On, I don't no, think no, we saw I didn't that. On the see film. that. Yeah. Actually, the cobra's going to bite anyway. You know, the thing about a cobra is, is they, they'll go into a room and they'll pick one person out of every, there could be 50 fucking people in that room and that cobra's gonna pick one and he will focus on that one person. And if you go laterally, he will go laterally with you. I mean, I've actually had him in the ring run the ropes with me. Fuck. Yeah, it's really cool. That's gotta be really And then bad. I'd jump out of the ring and grab the rope and the snake would come over and try to bite my hand. I'd move my hand and he'd bite the rope because the cobra strikes very slow. Is it? Oh yeah, yeah, you can watch, you can see them, you can move your hand and shit. You know, I, mean, I used to do that, I'd get in the hotel room drunk board, yeah, just put it on around. the bed, you know, hey, hey, oh, you almost got me that time. Then the phone, hello? Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Caught me again, yeah. That's Fuck. fucking classic. I hate when that man. happens. So, uh, as we're talking about snakes, I want to know, are you still like a, like a snake aficionado? Are you still, do you I hate snakes. You fucking hate snakes. I can't stand them. I'm That's terrified of them. fucking hilarious. Man. Jake the snake fucking hates snakes. Dude. I come up with the idea when I was drinking beer and smoking pot, man. Which is all best you know, ideas. Which is a, yeah, I have some of my best ideas when I'm stoned, you know. But Jake, you can't do that. You're afraid of snakes. I didn't think of that part. I just said, it'd be so cool, man, if a guy had a snake, man. Holy shit. Call him Jake the Snake. Oh, yeah. You know. And then I didn't think anybody would do it. So you had to do it yourself. I was safe. And uh, no, because I... Mid-South, I asked them about doing it because I was wrestling the guy there called Humongous. He had a hockey mask and he was making hamburger meat out of me, man. So I was going to come back with the snake against him. But Bill Watts said, no, 
That's stupid. Yeah. You know, what the hell? You think this is a circus? <laughs> yes, Bill, yeah. it's a circus. <laughs> and well, that's what I'm we sorry, all want. Bill, the we successful are. promoters that are still in business know it's a circus. <laughs> and that's what we all fucking watch, yes. baby. Yeah, the snake was a pain in the ass to travel with, man. You know, I couldn't you know, imagine. You keep man. it in the hotel room. And you know, back in the days, it's hard to at 4 a.m., man, when you're staggering drunk and you go in the bathroom and the snake's fucking raising up and looking at your dick, you know. <laughs> and like, okay, are you serious? Yeah. You can see it's not a full meal. Come on. <laughs> There's no fur on there. It's a There's little no rat. There's no fur. Are we going to bite know? another snake? You know? Yeah, so, you know, it sucked, you know. Or, I could only imagine though, because like uh, early on our touring, we did a lot of bands and stuff, and then you upgrade into you know buses and yeah. planes and everything like that. But as as I'm hearing your stories and everything, like back in those times, I mean, you're you're with Andre, you're with these other guys, and yeah. you guys are driving yourselves together yeah. to the next yeah. fucking gig. Yeah, you put in the me, time. Me and one one guy, I, I wasn't much in for the four guys in a car thing. So it's usually me and Hacksaw or me and Undertaker. Gotcha. You know? Oh, I'm glad you brought up the taker, man, because I, 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 I watched that rivalry. That was the time when I was a kid that I was watching, and that's really when I was so in love with, with wrestling. Mm -hmm. You had already had a career. Undertaker's just coming up mm -hmm. at this time. He's um, supposed to be kind of a heel, mm -hmm. but everyone loved him right mm -hmm. off the bat. So well, it that's was because hard. he was invincible. Yeah, nobody wants no. to love a loser. Exactly, right? You know, so how are you going to pull against him when you know that he can't be beaten? Yeah. He's, not, he's dead. You put him you down know, and he pops he right, comes back right back up. up. So him. therefore, I've got to align myself with him because I don't want to be on the losing side every damn night. Yeah. That's what fans do. That's the reason they hooked up with me because they believed what I did because I believed You're it. You're a very believable wrestler, yeah. man. I worked hard. So uh, along those things, like I, I remember watching the promos and everything mm -hmm. like that were fucking incredible. Yeah, man. I mean, you guys going back and forth. What, he didn't say much. It was mostly no, Paul Bear. Paul Bear. And then, when I slammed his hand in the casket. In the casket. That was that, my idea. That was great. That was my man. idea. I saw that. And then dragged the casket after me. Oh, we had to was... carve the casket out so it wouldn't break his hand. Yeah, of course. I, I, that's good. And I then, didn't and I then me that. hitting him with the chairs, man. Yeah. I hit him so many fucking times, man. And he just took it. Well, you he you were took, laying into him. I was pounding his ass, man. But he couldn't say anything because what had happened is we had actually shot the part where Macho Man hit me with the chair because of Elizabeth. I was going to hit Elizabeth and, and Undertaker grabs Bad the chair yep. and I let go of it and look at Undertaker and I look back and Macho hits me with the chair. Randy clocked me, brother. Oh, fuck did he clock me. Because we filmed that part first. Yeah. And I went down, man. Everybody's like, oh my God. And right. I said, they, 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 they were all like actually I knew, wondering. Like, I, knew what what, I knew what was fixing to happen with Taker. Yeah. So I stood up and I shook it off. I said, let's do it again, man. This time lay it in. Everybody's like, <laughs> no, that was pretty fucking good, no, man. We don't need to run it again. <laughs> are you shit? Are you kidding? No, man, go ahead, Randy. Randy, come on, dude. Look, just make some money. You know, that's what we thought back then. Yeah. The second time, he really blessed my ass, man. <laughs> but I knew that if I did that, Undertaker couldn't squeal when I hit him like eight or nine times. Yeah. He's and I hit him eight out. or nine times. But I hit every one of them was across the back. I didn't yeah. get many hits. No headshots, yeah. Whereas Randy did, you know, <laughs> fucking headshots suck, man. Dude, the headshots are amazing for me to look back on now with like all the CTE oh, shit out and everything, man. It's like, I look back yeah. at it and I'm like... I, I, <sighs> went, I went and did the test, brother, and uh, not good news for Jake. Uh, wow, that's a bummer, man. You know, so they, uh, they asked me, you know, up front, so how many concussions have you had? How are you supposed to fucking know so, that? Okay, so let me, let, me, let me just say this, Doc. <laughs> Without any doubt at all, I'll say five or six a year. But just for argument purposes, let's say three a year. Good ones. Yeah. Solid, real concussions. He says, yeah, three, that's pretty, that's not good. I'm like, no, not, not, not really when you multiply that times 36. Yeah, when you've been you wrestle 36 years. years. Yeah. So you're now really you're looking at 120. Business. Jesus. And therefore, that's the reason I have spots on my brain. Fuck, that man. they have to watch. I, I didn't know that. tested I'm every um, that. six months. Well, they're not growing. They're not growing. That's Oscar good. Um, and that's one of the reasons I started doing the show is with these brain problems, they're finding out that what happens is people work their whole life and then they retire. All of a sudden, when they retire, they're not talking anymore to outside, not getting outside. Uh, 
feedback from people. So okay. they're not arguing with somebody. They're not talking about the current event with somebody over here. They're at home watching TV doing this. And they're just waiting for it. And the brain just goes, like, cool. I, that, 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 makes, that makes sense. Yeah. So bottom line, you don't use it, you will lose it. It's a so my guy told me, he says, Jake, what you've got to do is you've got to start talking. That's fantastic. And I'm like, what do you mean talk? I do talk. He's like, no, no, no. You need to talk about your past. I'm like, dude, I really don't like doing that. You know? Yeah. And then I got the idea by going and watching Mick Foley do his show. And I watched his show. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm funnier than that motherfucker. Give me a break. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And he'd hung with him a while. Yeah, before. yeah. Well, you know, he tried to learn, but not much. <laughs> anyway, um, that's when I decided to do it. And what I found out is by going out and remembering those experiences had brought new experiences to remember that I'd forgotten so long ago. I can imagine that. You know? Happened. Yeah. Um, I told you about the Sherry thing. Yeah. I'd forgotten about that. That's incredible. You know, with, I can imagine that, though. That, like, when you're out on the road, like, every day blends every together. Every day something, man. Yeah, and yeah. it all blends together. Like, luckily, I'm in a band with uh, some of my best friends in the world, and we literally just, at the end of the day, we're having a couple Ooh. of drinks, we're yeah. talking shit, and we're talking about what happened fucking two weeks ago, you know? So we're still That's talking. That's a good thing, man. Yeah. You gotta keep bringing it up, man, because your brain needs to hear that repetition, man. If you don't, you forget it. Yeah. So since I've started doing this, I've alleviated some of my problems. Three years ago, I was having problems with sentences. I wouldn't finish them. That's surprising because when I see you fucking sound. talking, like that's and I just surprising. I forget what I was talking about. Incredible. I'm still going through some bad shit. Um, there are moments that maybe in an airport or someplace, I'll be walking and all of a sudden I don't realize where I'm at. Shit. I feel like I'm lost and it's scary. It's that's really fun. scary. That's scary as fuck. Yeah, it is, man. And um, you know, I fucking hate it. I don't like traveling by myself because of that. And so normally I don't. Um, usually somebody flies with me too. Yeah. But uh, it's not funny, man. And uh, we took a lot of fucking headshots over the years, man. I mean, my God, are you serious? I mean, back in the day, you know, you, if you were wrestling a certain guy, you might wrestle him for the next month straight. You know, you, you'd come up with a good match and you'd say, hey, let's do the same thing we did be, be back over there in Tampa. Uh, where I wind up hitting you with a chair shot. Okay, no problem. All of a sudden, that match gets called 10 or 12 times in a month. Yeah, because it, it, it did well. It did so they well. Want, they want to it's put it, it's they the want reaction to they wanted yeah. because they're going to come back with a cage match, so we got to do this and you got to do it again. So I got to do that chair shot again. So now I'm getting a chair shot every fucking night. Yeah. For a month. Yeah, no, that's fucked. I, I, get, well, I can only imagine. I mean, that's got to be a grind. Like when I was a kid, WF used to come through here in Southern California, and we wouldn't go to the big pay-per-view events. Yeah. That was that was you know a yeah, lot of a lot sure, of scratch to come sure. up with for that. So we go to the house shows sure. and stuff. And I remember uh, there was several several times I'd go to a house show and and, and see some cool shit. Um, but it was funny as a wrestling fan and a kid. It didn't really. I still thought it was real, man. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, I know. Not, I, know. Not like I got you. I got yeah. you. I got you. I was. I was taught to believe it. Yeah, so was I. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. And as a kid, I, I, you're just, I thought you it did. was real till the first night I refereed. Yeah. And then I was in shock. I could not believe it. That it was Corey. It Brad broke my heart. Oh yeah. Oh, I cried for days, man. Shit. Then I looked at my father like, "You motherfucker." I mean, it's still real. I mean, what you guys yeah. are doing in the yeah. ring is well, fucking incredible. My father was brutal, man. He faked the shit at home, man. You know, he had a neck injury supposedly, and it was bullshit. And he had us kids convinced he was dying. So that's incredible. That's fucking brutal, man. So that's incredible. You're a second generation wrestler, and you still, not until the day that you were refereeing, realized. Well, my dad was an asshole. Yeah. All right, man. So I want to get into a little, uh, another couple of quick stories. Um, you used to do a lot of your touring back in the day with uh, Hacksaw Jim oh, Duggan. Jesus Christ. And this guy. His hands, he used to his hands are like hams, man. Dude, seriously. You see, I mean, you're, you're amongst giants already, but yeah. you can see it in the ring, yeah. just how big that man's hands were. Yeah. He, when he's he grabbing that two by four, it looks like a play. fucking broomstick. Yeah, I, I remember uh, Axel, bro. He, he's just a no-nonsense guy. I mean, if you're in a bar and somebody starts some shit, Axel, like, 
Oh, I've been kicked out of better places than this. And the fucking shit is on, man. And just turn this place into a toothpick factory. And he says that before he's about oh, to yeah. fuck the place oh, out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. yeah. I use a warning. Yeah, that's his warning. Women and children out first. <laughs> and it's so funny. You, you, you see Hacksaw explode, but he'll never say a curse word. The most vile thing he ever says is, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. And boy, <laughs> look out at those three. He's going to kick somebody's ass. So he's still the all-American behind the Yeah, things. well, you know, he is in a way, but in a way he's not. <laughs> I remember hearing a story about him when he was in college. Well, I'll start out by saying he was in high school in Glens Falls, New York. Now, he's a police chief's son, right? He had not went to public schools. He went to a Catholic school. Oh, the eighth grade, oh they, were, they, were, they were holding wearing down. Wearing the tie. Can you imagine Hacksaw going from Catholic school to regular school now, but he's wearing the same clothes? Oh, shit. Because his family were poor. And so he's, now he's in a freshman, and he's still got the tie on, the only kid in school with a tie and, they're looking and a at jacket, him. and he's got a buzz cut, and he's cross-eyed. <laughs> and he's a police chief's son. He's just, he's just asking he's for it. He's a target. <laughs> but here's the problem. He beat everybody up. Yeah, that's, that's not he a good, that's not seniors. an easy target. He beat up the seniors. Yeah. You know, and he, he got kicked out of school several times. So his dad finally, finally, his dad went down to pick him up, picks him up. Dad, once they started, shut up, Jim. Get in the car, in the backseat. Oh, backseat, you're going to jail. What? <laughs> he takes his own kid, throws him in the cell. With Whoa. a bunch of drunks. Leaves him in there for 16 hours. Just with a bunch of fucking yeah. grown ass men. Derelict some bullshit, you know? Yeah, fuck. Well, he wasn't worried. That's, that's, so that's, a, that's, worse. that's, that's, out, that's the worst time out I've ever heard. He lets him out and he says, son, you got to stay in school. The only way we can afford to get you into college is if you want a scholarship. I've been able to, because he had three, four other sisters, and the family was just drained from putting them through college. Yeah, gotcha. And uh, Jim, you've got to get a scholarship. That's the only way we can do this. So you gotta excel in sports, so blah, 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 but you gotta stay in school. Because Jim, he, he not only played football in school, he wrestled also. I can see He was that. New York State that. champion in wrestling and yeah. all, uh, all state football. Yeah. Both of them. So he gets recruiters. Well, the great Lou Holtz, Everybody knows him. Comes to see him when Lou was at SMU. He takes Jim to SMU for a tryout. And Lou Holtz told me himself, he goes, never ever have I seen that or have I seen it since. And they put Jim on this machine that tests your leg strength and your quickness. And you put your feet up in it and you explode. You know, you kick it yeah, out. Yeah, as fast and hard as you can, right? Yeah, broke the fucking machine off. Nobody's ever done it since. He, his fucking leg string. Jim's one of these guys that can walk into a gym cold, put 500 pounds on the fucking bar, and do it. It's incredible. Just a natural beast. Thick bone, strong son of a bitch. You know, and uh, he wound up going to SMU and uh, wound up playing for the Atlanta Falcons. But Jim, and God bless him, brother, he, he did real good run blocking. But he couldn't pass blocking because that's a little finesse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep Jim him says, I'm not no fucking dancer, but if you want me to run over, I can do that. You know? <laughs> and that's what he did. Yeah, so, I love that impersonation right there. Oh, yeah. fucking that's what you got to dance. You got to dance, dude. I lived it. So in school, his dad told him, he said, son, if you get kicked out of school again, I'm going to throw you in that jail for a month. And you got to give me your word. You will never, ever punch anybody again. But, but, I mean, I can't hit him back if he hit me. Nope. So he said, oh, still didn't take it. <laughs> okay, I promise. I swear, I won't do it. So he didn't. But he picked up something new. So that's how he got his nickname, the Moose. Because what he started doing was, when somebody pissed him off, he'd pick up a chair, stick it on top of his head, then run ram. at you. He'd ram you. Yeah, ram you. <laughs> so he's, he's goring people now, you know. But he might as well just fucking punch him. Says, I didn't punch him. You know? <laughs> He found a great loophole there. His dad was good with that. <laughs> his dad was a great, great man. You know, police chief in Glens Falls, New York, for like 40 years and retired up there. Jim lost his mother to cancer and his dad, too. Uh, Jim had a bout with cancer here a while back, man, but he beat it. You know, yeah, lost a incredible. kidney, 
lost a kidney, but he beat it. And uh, today he's having a little problem with his ticker, man. And uh, my hope is, Jim, you'll live forever, man. I already told you what would happen if you die first. I'm going to come piss on your grave. <laughs> So that right there should piss you off enough yeah. to keep you alive. Wait, is, is that reciprocated, though? If, if, you, if you go first, hey, you go piss on your grave? That's fine. If I die first, come piss on me. I don't give a shit. <laughs> How dare you, motherfucker. There it is. There it I'll is. I'll reach right up out of the grave. That grave is, grave that, that's, and a, pull it. that's a fucking auntie if I've ever heard one. Brother, we're, we're best friends, man. I was at his wedding, and uh, I love the guy immensely. And um, just a stand-up guy. And, uh, I love that. I love the traveling brothers thing. Right yeah, there. Man, man, yeah. Like, I, we, I, I'm we did a lot of roads right together, now. man. And I've seen him, you know, during good times, and I've seen him in bad times, man. And uh, oh my God, one time, Jim had had some marijuana shipped to him from his wife. <laughs> shipped to him? Wait, 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 wait. Told him to send a FedEx. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know wrestlers. We're not real smart, okay? <laughs> so we were going through Jim's hometown and going to see his dad. So yeah. we had she, she had. He had he had her ship it to his dad's house. <laughs> well, she shipped, who did she ship it to? Jim Duggan, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, his dad's name's James. Yeah. So the package said J. Duggan. And it came to the police chief. Yeah, at home. <laughs> and the chief opened it. <laughs> so when we went to pick it up, the chief was not too friendly. Oh, no. To say the least. Oh, I'm sure. And then... Did he still give you the bag, though? No, no. We, we, it was very, very cold in the house, and we decided we should leave because it was so fucking cold because he wouldn't even talk to Jim. Jim knew something was up, but he didn't know what. And the old man wouldn't say anything, so he let us walk out. And as we almost get to the car, which was down these fucking steps, all the way to the car, he goes, uh, Jay Duggan, you have a package in my room. Get it out. Oh. And Jim knew right then that he fucking opened it. <laughs> back in the house and back to the car. The old man slammed the door and Jim let out one of those Jesus, Joseph, and Mary's. <laughs> drew back and hit the fucking dash so hard, so hard, that the fucking airbags deployed. No fucking way. Crushed our fucking faces, busted my nose. And we're driving down the road with the airbags deployed, <laughs> and I can't say a word. No, you're just like, I know that if I, I gotta say go. one word, he would eat me. Because <laughs> he's in the eat mode. That's incredible, just oh, yeah. that, that visual right there oh, of Hacksaw fucking Jim Duggan tiptoeing around his father. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. gotta be fucking amazing. Yeah, man, it was fucking incredible, brother. And those fucking, air, those fucking airbags hurt, man. Oh, those, I'm those, they, that's no bullshit. Those fucking things will kill you. Knock on wood, that hasn't happened to me yet. Oh, man. Uh, don't get in the car with Jim. <laughs> but the fucking whole dash came down. The, oh, dash, the dash fell on our legs and the fucking airbags hit us right in the fucking face. That's fucking that's incredible, crazy. man. That's fucking incredible. All right, man. Oh, so man. I want to get into this next part before I uh, take up too much of your time. Heard stories about you on this part, man. You used to be uh, One Take Jake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, You're really can. good at fucking cutting some promos. I was yeah, I'll nail a couple could, for you. Yeah, I was wondering if we could do a couple over here and yeah. uh, get that Before going. Before you do that, I want to say something, though. Yeah, go ahead, man. You and I were talking outside, and you brought up your dad. Yeah. And the game that he played on you, <laughs> and dressed himself up as Doink the Clown, and y'all went into the show, and you thought you were going to some meeting because you'd been an asshole to your grandmother. Yes, exactly. Dude, right on, man. <laughs> Respect. My pops is gonna fucking love Respect that. Respect and love, man. <laughs> yeah, you're a sick bastard. I like you, man. No <laughs> shit, man. You can hold my wallet at any time, man. Dude, Sweet. that's fucking rad. That is so He cares, man. Cool. <laughs> that's so fucking yeah, cool. My pops is gonna lose his shit cool. when he sees that. Cool. All right, cool, man. So I got, uh, we got a microphone ready to go, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt <sighs> my best, my best mean gene on this. All right. All right, everybody, we're here. We're about to talk about the big match coming up. We got Jake the Snake versus Brooks Wackerman. What are you going to do, man? Well, you know, first thing you said, when you said Brooks, it kind of scared me because I thought you were talking about Brooke Hogan. Oh. No, that would be a different animal to fight. I mean, her dick's like this. You know, what the hell? But oh, Brooks, come on. You Brooks can't be talking Wackerman. that way. Brooks Wackerman? 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 Whack it? Are you serious? Let me see. How do you spell that? Little B, baby O, and chicken shit Y. Step right on up, Brooks. I got something for you that it won't wash off. I promise you. 
I'll let you hold it if you're good, though. Strong words from a strong man. <laughs> All right, I got one more. I got to get out of here. All right, we got the upcoming event. Sinister Gates versus Jake the Snake Roberts. He's been talking a pretty big game. What do you got to say to Sinister Gates? You know, it's one thing to uh, talk the game. It's another thing to play the game. Oh, you play it well. See, the problem is with me, I don't play. So Sinister Gates, when you step through those ropes, know this. It's not my fault. I didn't want to do this to you. You forced me. You made me do it. Shame on you. Ooh, it's gonna be a brutal bath. <laughs> awesome, man. You're the fucking best. Thank you, man. man. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. I appreciate All right. it. It's been another great episode of Drinks with Johnny. Thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, cheers.